from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. I have a call for you from Hartford, Connecticut. One moment, please. Oh, thank you, operator. Go ahead, please. Hello? Johnny? Yeah, that's right. Bill Ferguson at Continental Insurance and Trust. I'm glad I caught you before you left Los Angeles. Oh, I was just about to check out of my hotel here in Beverly Hills and grab the morning flight back east. Well, don't. Yeah, what's up? Do you remember Alvin Peabody Cartwright? Cartwright? That wild old character who lives up in Lakewood a yeah. few miles north of Hartford? That's the one. Bad as they come, but worth a lot of money. Hey, <laughs> you can say that again. Oh? That robbery I cleared up for him last winter? Bill, he insisted on giving me a small bonus for it. 3,000 smackers. Wow. Yeah. So if Mr. Alvin Peabody Cartwright is calling for my services, I am ready, willing, and able. Well, he is, Johnny. He says it's tremendously important that you contact him at once. All right, then I'll finish my packing and grab the plane. No. What? He's out there on the coast. Has a little, or at least he calls it little. He has a place right there in Beverly Hills at 10321 North Roxbury Drive. 10321 North Roxbury. Did he tell you what it's all about? Only that it's very important that he see you right away. When you consider how many attempts have been made on his life over the years... Yeah, I know. And, Johnny... Yeah? Don't forget that Cartwright is a pretty important client of ours. If anything should happen to him... I see what you mean. Okay, Bill, I'll be in touch. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Insurance and Trust Company Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the life at stake matter. I notified the Beverly Hilton that I'd be staying over for a while and grabbed a Beverly Hills telephone directory. Expense account item one, a call to Crestview 32121. Well? Well? Mr. Cartwright? Cartwright? Yes, sir. Cartwright, huh? Well, that's very interesting. I beg your pardon? What's the matter? Don't you hear good? I said that's very interesting. You see, my name is Cartwright, too. Uh, No, no, you misunderstand. So, what can I do for you, Mr. Cartwright? No, no, uh, listen, would you? This is Johnny Dollar. Dollar! Oh, now, what's the idea of trying to confuse me that way? I'm Cartwright. You remember? Uh, yes, sir. And, uh, Johnny? Yeah? How did you do it? Do what? Get out here so fast. I only put in that call to Hartford about an hour ago, and here you are. I mean, how did you manage it? Oh, well, you see, Mr. Cr- I know these new jet flights are pretty fast, but... <laughs> now, Johnny, you haven't been fooling around with some of those rocket ships, have you? No, 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 I, I, I'm afraid not. I, I, I just happen to be here already, you see. Oh. I was working on a case up at Morrow Bay. Oh, and did you solve it? Yeah, it came out all right. Well, congratulations. Johnny, you are a wonder. And I think you deserve some kind of a reward for it. So uh, maybe I'll think of something. Oh, well, thanks, but that won't be necessary. Oh, whatever you say. I know that I'm deeply indebted to you for the things you've done for me, so, Johnny... Well, don't worry about it. Yeah, whatever you say. Well, nice to talk to you. Goodbye. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. Well, can't you see I'm busy? But you sent for me. I did. Yeah. You called Hartford, said you wanted to see me right away. Oh, of course I did. What's the matter with you, anyway? Of course I want to see you. Jonathan Peebles, too. Right away. Who is Jonathan Peebles? He's an old friend of mine. He lives out here. I telephoned him to come a-running, too. Oh, well, what's it all about, Mr. Cartwright? Well, just you get yourself on over here to my house, and I'll tell you. And don't you waste any time. You just hurry. Pretty important, huh? Important? It's vital. Well, is somebody threatening you, something like that? I said it's important, Johnny. And I mean important. Okay, Mr. Cartwright. I'll be right over. Hurry, Johnny. Please. Yes, sir. Yeah, old man Cartwright was as wacky as a bedbug. But what Bill Ferguson had told me was true. 
A lot of people have tried over the years to get to him, get to his money. So I phoned the desk for an Avis rent car and started down for my room. I say, started. The youngster who came barreling down the hallway chasing a hula hoop was probably a very nice kid, a great joy to his parents. May even grow up to be president of the United States. But as I started out the door, that hoop caught me between the knees and down my oh! way. I came to a couple of hours later on a table at the dispensary, I guess you'd call it, there at the hotel. I was conscious of a good-looking blonde in starched white uniform standing beside me, holding a wad of cotton a few inches from my face. That's better now. That's better. Where's the, where's the now, door? once more, take a good, deep breath. Mm. Inhale, Mr. Dollar. Mm. Yeah, I'll... Oh. <laughs> What the... You're just smelling salts. You had quite a bang on the head. Yeah. You should see what you did to that metal door panel. When the child's parents say that if there's anything they can do, they... No. Can... No. Nurse, where's my coat? Oh, here. But you ought to rest a while. No. Sorry. I gotta get out of here. And thanks. I dashed out to where my rental car was waiting for me and drove to the address of North Roxbury Drive in a wealthy section of Beverly Hills. A beat-up touring car that must have dated back to the early 30s was parked in the driveway. The front door of the house stood wide open. Mr. Cartwright! Mr. Cartwright! Oh, hello, is that you? He isn't here. What? Are you Mr. Dollar? I mean, uh, are you Mr. Dollar? Yeah, that's right. I, I'm Jonathan Peebles, Alvin's friend, and... Oh, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, yeah, what's the matter? He's gone. Something's happened to him, and... Oh, Mr. Dollar. Well, yeah? Well, from what I saw, from what I found around here... Oh, Mr. Dollar, he's been murdered. He what? I'm sure of it. He's been murdered. Cartwright has been murdered? Oh, Mr. Dollar, what can we do? Well, what happened? How long have you been here? Uh, he telephoned me, told me to come over here, that it was very urgent. Yeah, he told me the same thing. But he often does that. You know how he is. Always has to see me right away immediately. And often it's just for some little thing like sharing some ice cream with him or seeing a new flower that's just come into bloom. Yeah, yeah, I know. Almost well, uh, anything. So now... that's why I didn't hurry coming over here. And anyhow, Betsy doesn't like to be pushed. Who is Betsy? Well, that's my nice old car that's parked out front. Didn't you see it? Oh, yeah, sure. I named it Betsy after an old white horse I used to have when I first came to California. I see. A wonderful horse. And would you believe how old she was when she finally no, died? I, no, and I don't care. Uh, now, about Mr. Cartwright. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear, Mr. Dollar. Well... When I finally got here a few minutes ago, I was surprised to find the front door standing wide open. But then I wasn't surprised either, if you know what I mean. I certainly do not know what you mean. Well, I mean that he often left it open that way, and I told him a thousand times he shouldn't do it, that it was careless of him, and that one of these days some ruffian knowing about all the money he had... Well, I, I, I told him, Mr. Dollar. Yes, I'm sure you did, but that doesn't do us any good right now. No. Look, before we go any further, Mr. Peebles, just who are you? One of the many of Alvin Cartwright's eccentric old wealthy friends? No, I, I beg your pardon. I didn't quite mean that the way it sounded. Well, I should hope not. Uh, believe me, I may be eccentric, but I am not wealthy. If it wasn't for beneficial finance, I couldn't even keep up the payments on bets. You mean to say you're still making... Oh, now, wait a minute. Mr. Cartwright. Oh, yes, of course. So, uh, uh, well, anyway, I, I came into the house and I called to him. And I looked around for him, but there was no one here. No servants? no. And anyway, he keeps changing them so often that, well, I, I just can't keep up with them. Uh, so I, I, I looked all through the house. Any sign of a struggle, anything like that? No, 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 no. Then I looked out the window, and I saw them. Who's them? Two men walking out the driveway from back where the garage is. What did they look like? They were, well, they were awfully rough-looking, but uh, they were well-dressed, so I thought perhaps they were a couple of Alvin's new servants I hadn't met, but... Oh, if I'd only thought about that tour robe they were carrying and the way it was dripping. Hey, wait a minute. What's a tour robe? 
Oh, it's like a big, heavy suitcase, like a small wardrobe trunk. Well, it, it's more like a suitcase. Oh. It, it, it was heavy. They could hardly carry it. And, oh, Mr. Dollar... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen. You said it was dripping. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, all over the drive. Come on. I think we'd better take a look. And close that front door. Oh, oh yes. Come on. These men were coming from the garage. That's right, yes. But Alvin doesn't have a car, so what could they be doing there? Is that where he kept his old luggage? Yes, and the frozen food locker and some garden tools. Oh, oh, there. Now, look. Yes. Oh. Good Lord. Oh, yes. It, it, it's blood, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, they killed him, dismembered him. Then, oh, Mr. Dollar. I made a hasty inspection of the garage. Nothing. I found no sign of a struggle anywhere in the house. I tried to get a description of the men he'd seen from Jonathan Peoples, but I'm afraid he wasn't much help. And yet, with that funny mind of his... Oh, dear, Mr. Dollar, I'm afraid I'm so distraught that I, I just can't remember it all. All right. Poor Alvin. Now, look, they must have had a car, Mr. Peoples. Did you notice a uh, car out front? Car? Why, oh, yeah. Yes, 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 I did. All right, can you describe it to me? Uh, uh, yes, it was a touring car in 1931. Oh, no, 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 that's my car, I'm thinking. Oh, great. Uh, but there was another at the end of the driveway. And, Mr. Dollar, I've seen that car before. What kind? Uh, well, it was a four-door sedan. It was a big car. Yeah? It was silvery on the sides and a cream color on top, like uh, vanilla ice cream. You know the make? Uh, and the license number was CFU-160. Oh, good. You're sure of that? Oh, I never forget things like that. And you say you've seen it before? Yeah, many times. Where? At the dock. Where? At the Malibu dock. That's where he keeps the Alpi car. Where? Who keeps the what? Where Alvin keeps the Al P. Carr, his yacht. Al P. Carr. Alvin P. Carr. Okay, okay. It's a pretty slim lead, but come on. And it was a slim one, believe me. But I couldn't see calling in the police until I had something more definite to give them. Well, here, uh, we can take Betsy, Mr. Dollar. Are you kidding? We'll make better time than mine. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, we cut out dear. through Westwood, then Santa Monica, then hit the coast highway and headed north. Finally, we pulled up at the entrance of the Malibu Duck. Look, that's the car I told you about, parked there at the side. Yeah, then it looks like coming here may pay off for us. But uh, the boat, the Alpha car, it isn't at the mooring. Whitey. Oh, Whitey. Huh? Oh, hi, Miss Peebles. Yes. Have you seen Mr. Cartwright this morning, Whitey? Yeah, I didn't notice. Uh, his boat went out, so... How long ago? Oh, I'd say 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, see it out there, going up towards Point Doom? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, but those two men... What? Yeah, they had the shore boat take them out to the Alpi car. Yeah? Well, I ought to sue them. What do you mean? Uh, that little trunk that they was carrying. You see what I'm mopping up? Oh. The messy trail it left all over the pier for me to clean up. Oh, Lord. Yes, sir, I ought to sue them. Mr. Dollar, that means they're taking poor Alvin Cartwright's dismembered body out to sea to dispose of it, and on his own yacht. Well, we've got to find something fast enough to catch up with it out there. Well, there's that, uh, that Thompson cruiser of Larry Comstock's tied up here. Yeah, who's Comstock? Who oh, has a boat and motor shop in Los well, Angeles. It's fast enough. Well, he has a couple of big Johnsons on it, fastest one that's out here now. Then call him on the phone. Tell him we borrowed it. Well, now... Tell him why. It's an emergency, and that we'll pay him plenty for the use of it. Well, now, I don't know if you really ought well, to. I do, and listen, call the Coast Guard in Santa Monica. Have him send out a patrol. Boat. Come on, people. Hey, but, Mr. Dollar, those men on the yacht are desperados. They're killers. Okay, then stay here in the dock. I'll go it along. No. Alvin was my friend. I shall help to avenge his untimely death. Maybe I should have left him behind. Of course, I had a gun with me. But that wouldn't keep him from stopping a bullet if the men aboard the Alpha car decided to shoot it out. I opened the throttle wide on the twin outboards, and within 15 minutes, we overtook the big 75-foot yacht. Much to my surprise, it was simply cruising along. Of course. So as not to arouse suspicion. That's why, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, possibly. And yet, it must be pretty clear to them that we're chasing them. Look, 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 the man at the wheel. That's one of the ruffians I saw carrying the trunk with Alvin's bleeding body in it. Ruffian, huh? I'm not so sure about and that. And there's the other, coiling up those ropes up on the foredeck. Oh, kill us. Better stay down low, Mr. Peebles. They're stopping the boat. If there's going to be any shit. Look, look, look. There's Alvin. 
What's the Yes, Alvin, he just came up on deck. Holy... You're right. Can't you see, Mr. Dollar, they've put him together again. Yes, those killers... Alvin! Alvin! We are here! We've come to your rescue! Jonathan! Jonathan, what a surprise! And Johnny Dollar. Now, what are you doing out here? Are you kidding? What? Oh, of course. I remember now. I wanted to take you out for a nice long ride in my lovely yacht. Huh? Of course. That's why I called you. Johnny, I think you deserve something nice like this for all the good work you've done. And since you've done so many fine things for me over the years, I decided I should take you on a nice long cruise. And you could relax and eat and sleep and fish and... Yeah. And that's why you call the insurance company to get in touch with me? That's right. <laughs> now, wasn't that a great idea? Well, I'll be. And I invited Jonathan along, too. But an awfully funny thing happened, Johnny. No. Yes, sir, Johnny. The minute we left the dock, I just knew there was something else that I'd forgotten. And you know what it was? Don't tell me. Of course I will. I'd forgotten to wait for you and Jonathan. Oh, now. Isn't that the funniest thing? Yeah, Mr. Cartwright, it sure is. Now, oh, just a minute, Alvin. Yes, yes, Jonathan. What about those two men, those terrible killers? What did you say? Right there beside you. They killed you, they murdered you, and they... Uh, oh, what am I saying? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, you think it over, Mr. Peoples. Mr. Cartwright. Yes, Jonathan. You said something else you'd forgotten. That's right. You and Jonathan... I forgot to wait for you at the house, and then when we started off, I... Well, oh, wasn't it silly of me? I forgot all about you. What, what was the other thing? The other thing? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, the other thing that I'd forgotten was the trunk full of nice, thick, juicy tenderloin steaks that I'd set aside in the garage for this trip. Trunk full? Well, it was not a real trunk, just a little two-robe that I had out in the garage, too. But I remembered that the minute we came on board. And so I had to send Gerald and Harold back to the house in their car together. Gerald and Harold? Oh, they're my new butler and cookie. Oh, they are the nicest boys. Oh, Gerald and Harold, come over here to the rail so my friends... Oh, no, have... wait, Alvin, wait. Uh, yes, Gerald. You, 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 you mean to say those men standing there beside you? Are... Now, why don't you and Johnny come aboard and I'll introduce them to you. Now, wait just a minute. Then all that blood... What, Johnny? All that blood that was dripping out of that trunk. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, wasn't that awful? And it was all my fault because I let the stakes fall out too much. Oh, no. It was all over the place. I never saw oh, so much no. blood. <laughs> but now, come aboard, and we'll take the nice trip that I planned for you. Come on, now. Hey, you know something? It's crazy. It's wild. It does my heart good to get tangled up in something like this sometimes. Helps keep away the ulcers. As for the expense account, forget it. Alvin Peabody Cartwright shoved a check into my hands before I left that would cover the expense account a dozen times over. As for Larry Comstock, the man whose boat I'd appropriated, well, when he heard the story of what had happened, he wouldn't accept a penny for it. So, that's that. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Instead of telling you about next week's yarn, congratulations to station WDBJ in Roanoke, Virginia. 35 years on the air. Pretty good, huh? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Gene Tatum, Howard McNear, Forrest Lewis, Joseph Kearns, and Paul Dubois. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. <laughs>